Hello there, uh, YouTube world. It is I, Elena X Marie. I'm back making a video for the end of 2014. This is going to be my 14 things that pissed me off this year, or just in general. But for the end of 2014, I'm going to do a piss me off video. Kind of got the idea from Ella Steph. She is one of my favorite um, YouTube. Uh, personalities. I think she's hilarious and if you have never heard of her you should probably go check her out right now. I'll try to put the link in the information to her page. Um, anyways, let's start the list. Number one. Um, I took a bunch of classes at um, the College of DuPage this semester and I'm trying to finish out my associates. I'm pretty sure I finished it up, fingers crossed. I'm still waiting for the graduation confirmation email. But one thing that really pissed me off was this annoying girl who just so happened to sit next to me every day we had class. This girl was a former, um, she's about the same age as me, she was uh, 26, I think she said, or 25. And she had been in the military since she graduated high school. So this was like her first year back at school, like da da da. That's great. I'm all for, you know, people who've been in the military and served our country and everything to be able to come back after they're done and you know, get an education and start their lives and you know do what they want. Well this girl she really 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 wants to be a probation officer. She wants to work with like teenagers and you know juveniles who have uh, been arrested or just been you know getting in trouble with the law obviously and she is just one of the most ignorant and idiotic people I have ever met. We would be watching videos in this class, like videos on suicide, like teen suicide, videos on teen addiction, videos on the, we watched a video, it was like from like 2006, so everything was a little bit dated, but it was about the internet, and it was about the internet addiction, and every time they showed a person on this, like, video, they would talk about this person, she'd just start laughing and making fun of them. Like, out loud, where I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that heard this stuff. And I just could not believe that this girl was so ignorant that she would make fun of people that were just in a video for educational purposes. They were not, like, celebrities. They were not, like, doing anything to her. Just being in this video, I don't know. She just drove me crazy. Because every single day, she had something stupid to say. Some stupid comment. Something that made no friggin' sense. And... I was just like, where does your logic come from? I don't understand this girl. My, the last uh, day of class, last full day of class we had before we had our final, she made the comment about how she was failing the class and she's like, well, it doesn't matter anyway because uh, psychology has nothing to do with criminal justice. Are you, are you kidding me? Psychology has nothing to do with criminal justice. The study of the mind has nothing to do with figuring out why criminals do the things they do or how to change their behavior or how to help them change their behavior. Really? Really? That has nothing to do with each other? Nothing at all? I kept my mouth shut. I didn't say anything, but I'm so glad that class is over and I'm so glad I never see her again. If I ever end up, end up having a class again with her, I will probably drop the class or at least make sure I'm not staying anywhere near her because she drove me insane. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Number two things that annoy me. Um, the fact that I love Skittles. They're my favorite candy. And recently, I don't know exactly when, I think it was this year, maybe it was last year, but Skittles decided that they wanted to change their lime green M&Ms to green apple M&Ms. I'm not a big fan of green apple in general, but if I know I'm eating something that's green apple, that's great. Like, that's fine. I'm cool with it. But when I go to take a big handful of Skittles and I'm like, yeah, it's going to be delicious. And I get that green apple taste in the mixture of all the other deliciousness. That really pisses me off. And I don't want green fucking apple Skittles. I don't want them. Bring back my lime ones. I don't care that they're similar to the lime ones. I like the lemon and the lime. I like lemon lime. I like Sprite. Bring it back. That's all I'm saying. I freaking hate the green apple ones. Put the green apple ones in like a different package. I don't care. Put them in like the tropical package or something. I don't know. They don't belong in normal Skittles. They just don't. Number three, when people say that's so gay or so gay, when they're talking about something that 
obviously has nothing to do with being homosexual or being happy because those are the two definitions of gay. Gay does not mean stupid. When people use the word gay to refer to something stupid, that pisses me off. It really does. And a lot of times I keep my mouth shut because I'm just like, okay, whatever. I, I used to use it too. No, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. When I was younger, I that's how I learned what gay even was actually, because people would say, Oh, that's so gay, that's so stupid or da 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 type thing. And I asked my mom, I'm like, What what is gay? Like I've never heard that before and she explained it to me and then I looked up in the dictionary and I found out that it meant happy and it meant homosexuals and it had nothing to do with stupid. Homosexuals are not stupid. Being happy is not stupid. There's no reason that you should spill your drink or trip over something and be like, oh, that was so gay. Like, that's so gay. Like, what? What is going on? No, that, don't do it. I hate that. It makes me really friggin' mad. Um, number four. Oh, <laughs> so Taylor Swift had this amazing album out this year. Like, 1989 is one of my favorite albums. I have listened to it over and over and over again. I love it. I was never the biggest Taylor Swift fan. Um, I mean, I liked her. I liked her singles on the radio and stuff, but I never would have thought to go out and download her album or buy her album or whatever. Um, but I, I downloaded um, 1989 after hearing a couple of songs on it, and I love it. I really do. I love the whole album, but what pisses me off is the fact that it's such a big album for her, and... 90% of the songs don't actually sound like they should be her songs. Like, they don't sound like traditional Taylor Swift songs. They sound like other artists who I don't think have done as well, or they haven't been perceived as, or received as from the public as well as Taylor Swift has. So it makes me mad that these songs that I think sound similar to their songs are, are doing way better than their songs. Like, there's a couple songs on there that I think sound like new Avril Lavigne songs from her latest album. There's a couple songs that night that sound like new Tegan and Sarah songs, which T and Sarah got a shit ton of flack for changing their sound and becoming more pop when I freaking love their new album, their newest album. It's freaking awesome. Uh, there's a couple songs on her album. I, like, I think Blank Space, I think it sounds like it should be a um, Selena Gomez song. It really, I really think it does. If, if Selena Gomez had sang that song, I would have, or if somebody told me that Th that Blank Space was Selena Gomez and not Taylor Swift before I knew it was Taylor Swift, I probably would have believed them because I think it just sounds like a Selena Gomez song. And there's a lot more um, on there, but that that's just like, I don't know, that's just one thing that bothered me. Like, I still love the album and I don't want any hate from Taylor fans because I, I love her. She's a great person. I now believe she's real. I used to think she was a hologram. Like, she just didn't seem like she'd be a real person, but now, <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've changed my views. Maybe she's still, maybe she is a hologram though, because she's too awesome to be real sometimes. Anyway, <laughs> um, number five, going to the doctor when you're really sick and the doctor cannot figure out why you're sick or give you an actual diagnosis. Like, I was really sick last week. I had a 102 degree fever. I was freezing, well, under the covers and sweating. I was shaking. I had a sore throat. I was just, I was feeling like shit. I thought I was gonna die. My entire right side of my face was stuffed up. Like, I felt so much pressure from my nose, to my eye, to my ear, like my jaw, my teeth started hurting. It was horrible. Well, I go to the doctor and the nurse is examining me and she's you know, telling me something. She's like, oh, it's, it sounds like the flu. Everyone's got the flu, but it sounds just like the flu. Da 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 da, you probably have the flu. Well, then the doctor eventually comes in. The doctor goes, after I tell the doctor the same stuff I told the nurse, he's like, well, or she, sorry, it was a girl. She's like, um, well, it sounds like the sharp throat. I mean, that's been going around too and with a sore throat. And she looked in my mouth and she's like, yeah, you know, I think it might be stroke, sharp throat. She does the strep test. She does a flu test on me. But I wait there another hour. Both tests come back negative. Like, what? Are these faulty tests? Or... And I just, do I not have either of these? Like, what is going on? Well, either, I mean, either way, they gave me antibiotics, and the antibiotics helped me get better. Like, they worked either way. Still not sure what the hell I actually had. And that kind of pisses me off, because I would just like to know, did I have the flu? Did I have strep? Did I have a combination of both of them? I would believe that, because I work at a daycare, and strep was going around, and the flu's been going around, and colds have been going around. So I think it could just be a combination of all three. But I don't, I just want to know. Like, why can't doctors just, like... I, mean, I know it's not actually their fault, but why can't these tests be accurate enough to tell me, like, yes, you have the flu, or yes, you have strep. 
Um, but yeah, so that made me mad. Um, number six, I am a, a big OCD, I have a big OCD problem with collections. And if the collection doesn't, like if it all doesn't match, like I'm talking about like, art, like album artwork or, or not album artwork, but like book cover artwork or um, if it's paperback or hardcover. My friend has the whole Harry Potter series and half of them are hardcover, like half of them are softcover and it just pisses me off to no end. Like, I don't like it, I just can't look at it, it makes me so mad. All of mine are hardcover because I got them all like, as soon as they came out so I'm so happy that mine are all hardcover. Like with his Twilight collection, half of them are the like original book covers and then the other half are like the movie book, movie poster book covers. That makes me mad too. I cannot handle it. Don't like it. It, it drives me crazy. I just don't, I, I don't know. It bothers me. But also something that bothers me that kind of goes along with that is when um, a company releases their set of books or DVDs and they release like a box set together of only like half of the series, knowing that there's more coming out. Like when they released one through five of Harry Potter box set, knowing that there were at least going to be two more movies. There was at least going to be a six and a seventh. There ended up being eight movies. So there were three movies that are not included in that box set. I'm like, anyone who bought that box set, it just pisses me off. Why would you do that? Like why? Because now you have to go buy the other three by themselves. And then you have this box set and then you have three extra movies. No, I want them all together. I have all of the movies bought separately and I have all of the movies bought in the collector's package all together. And yeah, I'm, I'm a Harry Potter fan. I can't deny it, but yeah. Anyways, um, number seven, people who tell you or who text you first, then after you respond, don't text back within a reasonable about, amount of time. I'm talking like they text me like, Hey, what's going on? And I text them back, you know, maybe a couple minutes later, Oh, nothing much. What are you doing? Or, or, or maybe I am doing something and I ask them if they want to come or, you know, join me. And then they don't respond for like hours or they respond the next day and they're like, Oh, sorry, I fell asleep or, Oh, I had to go somewhere. It's like, you know what? You couldn't have just told me that when I was, you know, inviting you to go, go somewhere or hoping you were going to want to hang out or something. I don't know. It just drives me crazy. It drives me insane. Just respond. If you text someone first, at least respond back in a appropriate amount of time. Like, I don't know, that just it bothers me, bothers me to no end. Um, number eight. <laughs> My friends <laughs> know this one bothers me and it's, this is an old one. But uh, one night I got really drunk <laughs> and somehow Land Before Time got brought up. I, <laughs> I hate that series. I, I hate the first film because of the fact that it led to 15 friggin sequels like they did not need to make 15 sequels that is obsessive that is crazy and the fact that like people actually continue to buy them or watch them or whatever that just drives me nuts I don't know and I I don't like any of the sequels I've seen a couple of them don't like them I liked the first film but I don't like it anymore because it pisses me off because they were supposed to die in the end and they didn't and had they actually died in the end they couldn't have made those 15 fucking sequels so that is why I cannot stand the lab before time. <laughs> Anyways, um, number nine, people who hate on other people just to be mean, like they hate on people for their music or they hate on people for the movies they like or the celebrities they follow. Like, that's cool if you, if I don't like the same person that you do. Like, I, I, I love Katy Perry. A lot of people don't like Katy Perry. Guess what? I don't care if you hate Katy Perry and you don't want to listen to her music. You could tell me, you know what, I don't want to listen to Katy Perry. And I'll be like, fine, let's not listen to Katy Perry. But I don't need a 30 fucking minute rant on why you hate Katy Perry because I don't care. I really don't. Like, I love Eric Carter. He is one of my favorite celebrities. And he has been one of my favorite celebrities since I was seven years old. I have an obsession with Eric Carter. And I know a lot of people don't like Eric Carter. They don't care about his music. They don't care about... Any of the things that I care about about him, if he's in a movie or a TV show, they don't give a shit. But you know, at least respect the fact that I like it 
and that I like him and I actually am interested in what he does with his life and what he's been doing and going to see him in, in concert. I'm not going to force you to listen to his music if you don't want to. I'm not going to force you to go with me to his show if you don't want to. I mean, ask you if I think you might be willing to go, but I'm not going to force anybody to do anything. I don't, I don't know. I, I just can't stand when people hate on other people for no reason. Like, I don't, I don't really hate on anybody for anything like that. Like, if I'm not, if I don't really like something, I'll probably say I don't really like it, but it doesn't mean I hate it or I hate you for liking it. But that, so that bothers me. Um, number 10. Something that pisses me off is something that I do all the time. I go to the store specifically to buy something. Like, I'll go to Target specifically because I need toothpaste. And I will go to Target. I'll buy a bunch of other things that, yeah, maybe I need. Probably don't need. But I'll, I'll buy clothes or I'll buy a movie or I'll buy something, some candy or some food. I didn't need. And I get home or I get in my car and I realize... I forgot to buy the goddamn toothpaste. I didn't even remember the one fucking thing I came to Target for. I spent fucking $50 maybe. And I didn't even buy what I came to Target for. <laughs> that pisses me off. And it's just something I cannot help doing. I do it all the time and it drives me crazy. Um, number 11. Painting my nails. And my right hand specifically because it never fucking looks good. I always fuck up my right hand because I'm left or I'm right handed so I can paint my left hand great but when I go to paint my right hand it gets everywhere if I try to do a design on it I can't do it because I can't like use my hand the proper way I hate painting my right hand it pisses me off I wish that I could like somehow paint my nails on my right hand with my right hand <laughs> I know it's not possible but I wish I could um all right number 12 this goes back to kind of school. Um, teachers at, at colleges, talking about college, not really high school, but I had this problem in high school too. Most high school teachers are willing to, you know, give you the benefit of the doubt though and they'll bump you up. But college teachers are sometimes really big dicks and they don't like to help you out when you're doing okay in the class, but you know, you could be doing better or, you know, maybe you're on the border of passing a class. Like, I took a math class a couple semesters ago, and I had a, was it, a 79.4. Yes, I know you don't round up a 4, you would round down for the 4, so it would stay a 79. But when a teacher's only giving solid letter grades, like they do in high school, in college, in high school they give like A+, plus, B+, plus, or, you know, C-, minus, B-, minus, whatever. In college, they only give you A, B, C. So if I have a 79.4, and you won't bump me up to that 80 so that I have a B, that pisses me off. Because, honestly, like, I just think that's shitty. Like, it'd be one thing if I had, you know, a 78.3, a 77, like, don't, okay, don't bump me up. But I had a 79. Like, come on, you couldn't just give me the friggin' extra points no, half points, not even full points, just half points, so that I could get the 80 and get a, get a B in the class. Because now it looks like I did a lot worse, I feel, than I actually did. A B, a, a C looks a lot worse than a B. And I wish I could have gotten that B in that class, but I didn't. I got a C. Because my teacher was a jerk. And same thing with my earth science class, because she gave me a D. And I knew I had a D. I had, it was like, a 65 in the class. I knew it was a D. I was not expecting, you know, it was not a 69, I wasn't expecting her to bump me up to a C, but um, I asked her, like, if I needed to get a C or higher to pass this class so it would count for graduation. And instead of actually answering my class, my question about whether a C or a D was passing or not, whether I needed a C to actually graduate, she just responded to my email like, well, if you want to raise your grade, I hope to see you next semester in class. No, that's not, it's not do I want to raise my grade, it's does this count. Because if it does count, I'm not retaking this class. If it counts, then, or if it doesn't count, then I'll retake the class because obviously I want to graduate. I want to have my associate's degree. So I think I graduate. I think the D grade counted. Um, I sent in my graduation um, petition to graduate. 
waiting for a confirmation email. Fingers crossed that I get it because I want to graduate and be done with my associates. I want to go on and take more childcare classes, maybe even become a teacher. I'm still trying to figure that out, but I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, number 13, the things that piss me off. Long holiday weekends because I always fuck up my sleep schedule and I stay up until 4 or 5 in the morning sometimes even seven in the morning and then I try to go to sleep and I don't wake up until four in the afternoon <laughs> two in the afternoon and I completely fuck up my sleep schedule and it sucks and I'm gonna have to go to work on Friday at 6 30 in the morning and tonight is New Year's Eve and I'm probably not gonna go to bed until four in the morning so that's gonna suck and I hate these long weekends I mean I love them because I don't like I like having the time off of work I like being able to hang out with friends I like, you know, to have fun, but at the same time, I'm so fucking pissed that I fuck up my sleep schedule so bad. And the last one, this has always been a really big pet peeve of me, mine. It pisses me off so much when someone posts a Facebook uh, status or post or whatever and they like their own post. Like, why are you liking your post like obviously I know you like it you posted it like you don't need to like the one that you posted it it makes no fucking sense and it drives me crazy it just kind of makes it look like oh look they've got seven likes oh wait they're one of the people that liked their own post so really they only have six likes but I don't know why like, why do that don't do that it just drives me crazy I hate it stop it I used to really be annoyed with hashtags on Facebook but now hashtags actually work on Facebook so I can't be annoyed with that anymore but it used to drive me crazy too because people would be like, hashtag uh, partying all night and it didn't actually do anything. You're just saying hashtag something for no reason. Now it works. Now you can click on it and it'll say all the things that somebody used hashtag partying all night for. But before I used to not do that. So that used to make me mad. Um, anyways, that was my 14 things that pissed me off for two th the end of 2014. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to make more videos, let me know. I, I like making videos. I'm trying to continue to make videos to help myself get over my social anxieties, get over my um, awkward, <laughs> awkwardness. Just, I don't know, talking in front of the camera kind of helps, I guess. And we'll see where this goes. It's all, oh, it's also part of my voice diaries thing, which surprisingly it's been almost a year and I haven't needed a surgery so I'm really excited and I don't think my voice has changed very much since then so I'm I'm wondering if maybe I won't need a surgery for a long time we'll see I'm, I'm hoping fingers crossed that it stays this way but um, it's New Year's Eve 2014 is ending and 2015 will be starting soon. I hope it's a great year for everyone. I hope it's a great year for me. Maybe time for change. Hopefully I won't be single for another entire year. We'll see what the new year brings me. Goodbye everybody. Love you.